Good morning, people. Hope you are well. Hope you slept well. Hope, like me, you are blessed and highly favoured. Magnet for miracles. The solution to someone's problem and the answer to someone's prayer. September the 23rd. My theme song is God's love and justice. I'm singing it right to you, God. I'm finding my way down the road of right living. That's Psalm 101 from the Message Bible. So, hope you're finding your way down the path and the road of right living. So I wanted to talk today <coughs> about your feet and your bum and whether or not you do any exercises for your feet because you spend all day standing, well, you spend all day sitting on this, but you use these to get you to where you need to go. So even if it's just walking around your house, you need to use your feet, we use them all the time. But we don't really think anything about the connection between our feet and our bum. And we don't, and I'm going to ask you another question. How many of you actually do a workout for your feet? I don't mean a lunge or a squat. I mean, how many of you actually sit down? <coughs> excuse me. How many of you actually take the time even to think about what exercise can I do for my feet? Those, you know, because the legs are our slave masters now. So of our feet, they've got to take us everywhere. So what care do we do besides pedicures and whatever else, you know, what do we do to strengthen our feet? And one of the things we can do, if I asked you all to take your, use your hands, your hip width apart is usually from your wrist to the top of your fingers. So if you just put your hand between your feet here, so you're standing hip width apart, so you're standing in line, you've got to think about the alignment of the hip, knee and second hand. So you want to imagine you've got a line running through the middle of your hip, running through the middle of your knees, running through the middle of your second toe and that's the alignment you want to have because once you've got that alignment there your bum is talking but if your knees are turned in your bum's not talking so align your feet hip width apart just allow your knees to drop in and when your knees drop in first of all you notice that as the knees come together the arches are gone your feet that is your natural um, shock absorber is the arch in your foot so the less of an arch you've got, the less shock absorbers you've got. So the more potential for injury through the ankles, knees, hips, it goes up. The body's clever. So if you let your knees drop in as well, you can place your hands on your bum, but let your knees drop in. You see that switches off completely. Now get the knees in line with the second toe and you start to feel something happening in your bum. That's why I said you're on your, sorry. Yeah, that's why I've said today is your feet and your bum. The minute you align the knees over the second toe, your cheeks should switch on. They should feel a bit more toned. Now, can you lift your big toe off the floor? Keep the other four toes down, not curled, but lengthened. Lengthen the other four toes, lift the big toe, keep the alignment. Because when you do that, one, the arches lift, two, the butt starts to talk. So that's the position you want to get yourself into. So that's just a real nice, easy one. Draw up. Hold up, lengthen the other four toes. Really focus on lengthening the other four toes. You feel a lot of stuff going on right through your feet, like someone's trying to pull your feet. But as you feel that work going on through your toes, as you lengthen your toes, so you should feel it right up into the hands, into right into the bum. That is what's supposed to be happening. So your feet and your bum are connected. And you switch them on that way. Release the toe. Pull the toe up. Lengthen the other four toes. Draw the toe up. Make sure the knee's running in line with the second toe. You've got a workout right there. Now you can add to that workout, because when I do this one, I add to it. So I lift the toes, my arches are lifted, I get the alignment, I feel it running through the bum, and then decide to add the obliques. I mean, I've shown you this guys before, so I do this. So you, you can look for your six pack, but if, you, if your diet is rubbish and your gut's not working, forget six pack, but you can activate the obliques from this position here so you can place your hands on the oblique line just focus on trying to draw the oblique line away it feels like it goes in because it comes together draw it away from your fingers and then draw it up so now i've got even more work going on i've got my arches my shock absorber switched on i've got my knees line on my second toes i've got my bum switched on and i've got some oblique work going on so i can drop pull the toes lengthen the other toes make sure the knees are aligned Draw away, draw up. I can decide to hold the toes up whilst I do 10 of these and release, breathe in. Hold the breath, draw, 
breathe out, draw up, not forgetting the feet are here. So I've got that all switched on. That's those. Can I then keep the big toe down and pull the other four, eight toes up and draw them up and spread them and lengthen them and still keep the knees in line with the toes. Now I can feel it more on the inside of the thighs as well. It goes right up into my gina. For you guys, it's gonna go right up into your testes and draw them up. So I wanna pull, I wanna lengthen, I wanna keep the knees switched on. My bum is on fire now, it's talking. And now I can just add the transverse if I want to. So I'm here and I take this second finger, draw it away and pull it up. So I'm pulling my belly button away from my finger, gently, and up. I'm not keeping my toes lifted. I'm trying to splay my toes. So I've got that movement there and keep my knees. So I've got everything switched on and working. So I can go toes, 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 toes. That's really quite an easy one. Once I've done those, I can then just imagine I'm trying to pick something up with my toes and I can claw. So I can literally just lengthen my feet, lengthen my toes, try and lengthen everything, and then claw, draw up, and release. Lengthen my toes, give them a good stretch, and then claw, and pull up, and release. Every time I do that, I'm just going, there's something happening downstairs on my feet, something's happening upstairs in my tush. So I'm here, I claw, I can draw up through the perineum and use the floor as well. Whatever you do, if there's a movement that's happening around the pelvis, there's a movement that should be happening inside your pelvic floor. It's everything that comes back to your centre and what's inside your centre is that pelvic floor. So it should all come back to the same place. You're here, you claw, you've got a movement inside, you've got a movement outside, you've got a movement downstairs, you've got a movement through the hamstrings. You've got a section of work, but you should be thinking about what you do for your feet. And then the last thing I do, which I can't show you now, is on the stair, I do toe, a toe raise. So I put just the big toe, at the base of the big toe, hanging off the stair. Not a calf raise, not the ball of the foot, just the toe, and try and do big toe calf raises. They will tell you a story and a half. But that is a workout you should be doing for your feet. Your feet, you should have a feet workout in your program at least two to three times a week. And it should take you no more than 10 minutes. So I will do it, when I do mine, I like to do three minutes, three minutes. I like to do three minutes, three minutes. I do 10 toe claws and then I go to do six to eight toe raises and then when I walk around I feel totally different but it's going to help you it's going to help you in terms of hip knee and ankle alignment because it's going to build that sensory awareness it's going to switch on the external rotators of the hip the glute med the things that's supposed to externally rotate and keep it's going to improve your gait but it's going to give you a natural shock absorber so it's going to allow you to be able to move around so when you see people like myself in the five finger shoes, you're not going to keep saying, aren't you walking barefoot? Yes. Isn't it dangerous? No, because it's not dangerous to walk barefoot full stop. And isn't it better for me? Because all the messages that I get from my feet that go through and tell, because obviously if I'm pulling my toes here, there's a message that's being sent straight up into my bum that's being sent into my spine. So the messages are going up and down. The minute you put your feet into shoes, those messages are lost. So that's why it's really good. So have a foot workout that gives you a butt workout at the same time. It just gets the butt firing, so it should work better when you then go and put your trainers on and go to the gym, because you've woken up your feet that you have to use, and you've woken up the external rotators that you should be using, not that you have, you, you have to use them, but whether you use them is another story. But once they're switched on, you have the ability to be in a better position, and you get a better butt. Better butt, better thighs, better feet, better shock absorbers, better of life. And that is my tip for today. Your feet and your butt. Hey Chrissy. So hopefully that will make sense to you. Remember to like and share this weekend when we do the masterclass uh, at the workshop. All of this stuff will make so much more sense.
So, like and share, inbox me for more information if you want to get the last couple of places in the masterclass. But until then, I'm pelvic for health and happiness. Have a blessed and highly favoured day. Take care.